and we are live. We're live. We're waiting for people. I hope you all have a nice cup of tea. And tonight, uh, I'm going to be joined by my friend Helen, who is here right now. Boom, boom, boom. And she requested already to be in the video. So I'll accept. <laughs> uh, view the request and go live with Helen. Okie dokes. So Helen should appear on my screen soon. I hope you can all hear me okay. Um, it's connecting at the moment, so hopefully the Wi-Fi is working. But uh, me and Helen uh, are just going to have a chat, really, on relationships, uh, friendships, um, why the reason why we, we attract, attract the people who we attract in our life. Um, why is he still connecting? Um, oh, Helen, apparently your invitation has been declined. What is going on? Go live with Helen. Hey, Helen, I'm just sending you the request, by the way. And uh, hopefully it will work this time. Hey, everybody. Thanks you so much for joining. Um, yeah. Ah, there it you. Yeah, it worked, worked now. Oh, exactly Finally. what happened earlier. The connection just dropped or something, but I have I no idea. Have... Story of my life. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are I'm you? I'm good. I'm good. The dungarees are back. Yes. I thought Good. I approve of the dungarees. Yes. I just thought, you know, let's wear the dungarees. And a sparkly t shirt, a sparkly shirt as well. Yeah, a bit of Christmas, a bit, a bit of summer with the dungarees, just bring back a little bit of a mix, really. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like it. I approve. <laughs> so, um, do you want to introduce yourself first? Sure. Uh, so, I'm Helen. I run HHH Self Defense, which is nothing to do with relationships, but that's what we're going to talk about because why not? Um, so, I guess like I was talking about relationships on my personal page, which is HH Hellraiser. Um, and I was talking a lot and we were talking a lot about relationships and about love and it was like, oh my God, these conversations need to be heard, right? Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. So I think psychology, um, which is really quite stressful at the moment. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm. But it's going to be okay. You know, it's going to be yes. fine. So, yeah. And also because... Totally studying, really studying as well the topics about love and relationships as well in psychology and you mentioned as well that you're going as well to study about more about attachment and breakups is that correct yeah um that's not i've i haven't done it yet it's like in the next subject and i have to do an assignment before i do that which is uh very stressful mm -hmm. um so that's due in a week on tuesday um which i have not done yet um, and I have not started yet either, um, but that's okay. Now I have two assignments due. One is next Tuesday and one is the following Tuesday. Okay. So I'm focusing on next Tuesday first and then the following Tuesday I have a week to do that. Hey, so. listen, I'm right. hoping that this live is also going to give us both, and for you as well, you, you're studying a, a, a bigger insight as well. So, you know, once you've got your papers done, it's going to be like, yeah, I know exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Well, I think like the more it's like one of these things where the more information you have, the more you have to play with, and the more kind of you can think about different situations in a different light. Yeah. And you know, once your when your knowledge is here, it's like, well, the answer is yes or no. Exactly. And then when your knowledge is here, it's like, well, maybe it's yes, no, or maybe. And then you are your your knowledge is out here, and then it's like. Oh, hang on, there's like 10 different no options, 10 different yes options, and 10 different maybe options. And it's like, yeah, every, yeah, everything's just so much bigger. This is why you kind of decided to ask as well your followers a bit of um, a few questions, a few challenging questions, but also I guess to do a bit of a research because it's, um, it's always interesting yeah. to kind of understand how people experience relationships and like what really kind of loving like love in general means because love you know yes of course love can be all like butterflies yeah. shit like this really but 
you know, it, it's actually a really challenging question, especially when you ask, like, how does love really make you feel? And it's not just in romantic relationships, but even like in friendships or in yeah. general, like how we relate with people, with other humans, with yeah. souls, you know, and, um, and for some people, it was actually really hard to answer. And to be honest, I, I had to take my time as well, especially on the question, how does love make me feel? I was like, well, it's not exactly one of those like straightforward answers. Like I really need to take my time to think about all of my experiences, like very subjective yeah. at the end of the day. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, and it even like, you know, it goes so far as to, you know, you could ask someone one week, how does love make you feel? And then you know, if they're in a relationship, then after they've been broken up with or something, you can ask them the same question the following week and they would have a completely different answer. So yeah. it's like very situational as well. So, you know, there's not, there is no answer. It's just what your answer is on that day at that time. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. You know, really, that, that's it. That's as much information as you yeah. can get. I mean, if we talk about it on a, let's say on a general perspective, I guess it's, it's, um if we don't just focus on just on relationships but in general just simply um you know always making conscious choices based as well on just genuinely loving someone like you know when you just feel the connection with you know with that particular friend or with that with that person and you feel like man like you know instead of always acting from you know based on fear uh, perhaps I'm afraid of saying certain things, then I just genuinely love you for who you are, like for the person that you are. I just, you know, I truly enjoy the connection with you and the presence. And I just, I just really feel it. Yeah. Even like with a group of people, it could be exactly the same. Like you just feel so supported. Everybody's so supportive. You can feel it with, honestly, we can feel it with your pet. Like you, you can feel it with yeah. you know, it's It's a very... It could be a very much bigger concept. You could feel like almost like even love in terms of like the connection with the universe, you know, to mean kind of like unconditional love when you see past your ego, I guess. But but also, yes, if we're a little bit more humans, then I guess as well, a lot of the answers as well could be love is, is kind of terrifying, exciting, but also terrifying. Um, terrifying, yeah, yeah definitely. And, and it's that whole thing of like, um, sort of that love, love versus lust. Um, you know, like you, you see someone and you're like, oh my God, I love them. Like, oh, just like, they're so pretty. Like, I love that person, you know, but it's like, that's not love, that's lust. That's just like, you know, you it's, and, and like, especially like you starting to see someone, maybe you've been seeing them for like one month or something and you're still like in the real lovey yeah. phase, like that's still lust. And it's like, you're in love with the idea of being in love, but not necessarily in love with the person. Yeah. It's, it's not to say that that won't happen, but it hasn't happened yet because you, you know, I think it takes, personally, I think it takes time to be able to feel that love, like truly yeah. in your soul, you know, like you don't just meet someone and go, okay, I love yeah. you. It's like, it doesn't work like that. Because I think <laughs> most of the time what happens is, I don't know, maybe some people disagree on the honeymoon phase, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, when you start dating someone, obviously you do appreciate the qualities of the person also because you tend to attract someone who doesn't really have all of the same qualities that you have, right? Because generally, you know, you, you see someone who has different qualities that perhaps you others compliment yeah, yours, compliment each other in the way, yeah. but, um, and you, of course you appreciate them, but, um, and when you get to know someone, you know, everything is just really nice. There's the, the, the flirt, right? And, and everything just seems like happy jolly all the time. But I think it's when you, you know, when time, you know, goes by. When the real stuff starts to happen, like when you have to actually talk about real things and you have to deal with real situations and, you know, like all of that. And, you know, like, for example, lockdown, you know, people that were in new relationships, like a lot of them broke up or a lot of them got closer but like no one stayed the same because you can't do that when you go through this sort of situation yeah. you know you can't just stay the same that, that's not yeah. how it works well, <laughs> because when you start to get to know someone on a deeper level it's um 
it's where the the triggers start to come out it's you know we we talked about and i guess we're going to talk about it a bit more as well like the different kind of attachment styles in the sense that like you know um different people have different tendencies uh when they are in relationship so say for example um someone can generally be a little bit more um anxiously attached in relationship and say it's because maybe they you know when they were children they they didn't really have um they had a lot of mixed feelings from their parents or from their caregivers so for example one parent was available sometimes and one parent or like at other times the parent wasn't emotionally available um or you know they they kind of left you feeling very unsafe um so you constantly had very mixed feeling that bring up a lot of anxiety and it takes a really long time to unpack all of this and obviously what you tend yeah to you know not to have when you are a child then you tend to seek it every time when you are in relationship but for example say you you also have the opposite so you have the more let's say the the avoidant which could be also like the dismissive one which generally means that yeah. if when you were a child you didn't have your parents weren't available at all and they made you feel as well that like it wasn't okay to express your emotions or your needs or it wasn't okay to cry to just simply be vulnerable you had to survive yeah. you basically had to decide to just be self sufficient learn to be with yourself and you created this armor these to to protect yourself and to create this defense mechanism so perhaps in relationship you need a lot more space and although yeah. you can be quite in tune with other people's emotions um but you definitely want space or you feel like if if you then attract someone who is more anxious attached in the relationship it's then it's quite very difficult it's very difficult because yeah. you need space but also you need to communicate to the person tell them that you want the space but the the anxious attached is like oh wait but you know for me it's important because i crave the connection and the intimacy because that's you know i have fears of and that I, mean, so yeah. i guess it's like why we attract or retract and like understanding as well the differences in the relationship and how we can work with the differences mm i mean it's yeah it's it's so difficult to kind of generalize i think because you know everyone like something different and need something different and want something different but like I know only just from my own experience that like in my younger relationships I was very much like more of the you know I needed someone there holding my hand kind of thing um you know you know maybe in my early 20s or something and then the older I got the less I needed that and the, the more I realized that and and you know the more I realized I was pushing people away constantly and and just going no nope, no 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 and you know and it was just a constant like and and you know people would be like what like you broke up with someone again and be like yep I'm done I'm out I'm done you know and it was just like draw a line draw a line draw a line draw a line and it was you know just completely just harsh but i guess like that again is just like the way you deal with stuff and and i definitely saw myself changing and i think a lot of the time like if you go through a lot of relationships that are maybe um harder relationship and more difficult relationship then it puts you off future relationships so you kind of start to tie every relationship with that brush and go well that one was like that that one was like that that one was like that so i'm done like i don't want to do any more of them because they're all like going to be yeah. like that because three of them were and that obviously means that they are all going to be like that right <laughs> work comes into place in the sense that like if you don't constantly unpack all of your you know all of your past experiences um whether it was experiences in relationships whether it is obviously due to also how you were treated as, as you were a child because at the end of the day it's all, all of these patterns like until you yeah. bring that awareness and you start to realize well actually there is a pattern here in every relationship i go mm. to it's like you know perhaps because i've been treating a certain way once then clearly now i have this fear of being hurt again and i've now created this defense mechanism and it's easy for me to just run away 
than than to perhaps be trying to explore the relationship in a different way and also kind of understanding the difference in this person and you know try and uh, kind of communicate differently and perhaps like navigating through conflict as well in a different way I think it's yeah. and it, it's not easy because honestly like when even communicating your needs I know that obviously it depends on the individual it depends on the the person you're with as well but it, it takes a lot of courage and it takes as well a lot of vulnerability because you you never know exactly yeah. the outcome especially when you're still getting to know someone um yeah and I think it's important it's it's hard because like you kind of want for both people to to still communicate what they would like in relationship and they could be kind of different things but being able to try and find a common ground but at the same time um you know without pushing each other away or without triggering each other mm -hmm or and also trying to maintain a sense of safety where they both feel safe and stable in the relationship um yeah which is really difficult actually like and you know just generally like like finding that happy medium anyway even in a friendship or relationship or whatever like it that in itself is difficult it's that you know that's not an easy thing to do because someone always wants something more and you know it's like a kind of a, a battle of who's going to push who away first almost you know or I mean that's the way I see it so yeah. it's hard yeah exactly you know. I mean um what what would you say are your um experiences say even like dealing with I don't know not just romantic relationships but even like with friendships um because I've realized as well that sometimes in friendships can happen a similar thing. So say if you, it's the same thing when you have patterns and you feel like, you know, perhaps you have a friend who loves you unconditionally, but every now and then they need to have their own space. And if they can be, they know that, if, for example, if they can be present for themselves, then they tell you, they're like, hey, I, at the moment, I don't have the emotional capacity to be present for you as well. But this doesn't mean that, um, you know, you have done something wrong. Um, I don't know whether... You are... Which is such a hard conversation to Pardon? have. It's such a hard conversation to yeah. have. But it's always a hard you know? conversation to have. But I don't know whether you had any yeah. sort of experiences as well in friendships where you both had to communicate or whether you were both, like, both understanding each other but with differences. Yeah, I mean, I, my, I'm, I'm terrible at being, I'm friends with everyone, but I'm not close friends with mm. anyone. Like I'm, I'm friends with everyone. Like I like everyone, yeah. apart from people that are assholes, but there's not that many. <laughs> um, but like, basically I'm friends with everyone, but I don't have very many close friends at all. And I certainly don't have any like long-term close friends. Um, because I've moved a lot in my adult life. I've moved pretty much like every six months to 18 months I've moved. So every time I move, you know, like you see people every day and then suddenly you don't see them every day anymore. And then suddenly you haven't spoken to them for six months and you don't even realize it's happened. And it's like nothing happened, nothing like you didn't fall out. I don't really fall out with people like that, but I just, you know, when you don't see them every day, you just don't contact each other as much and then suddenly you haven't spoken to them for god knows how long and it's like oh my god so i'm like actually since lockdown started i've made such a big effort to reconnect with people that i haven't spoken to in a while and kind of all the people that that happened to you know oh god i haven't spoken to this person for six months or god i haven't spoken to this person for three yeah. years you know i mean and that's happened <laughs> like on various occasions but um yeah, so it's it's kind of like, okay, like now it's time to make an effort to reconnect with these people that neither of us have fallen out and neither of us have done anything wrong, but life has got in the way. And that's basically the reason that I don't have, like I have two really, really close female friends that are, it's like the three of us are really good friends, but I only met them last year. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. I, I met my like one of my best friends i i met her literally like last year in october i know she's here yeah hey, Viv. Yeah. Yay. um and then i have um like i have a, a a 
close, like literally like a, a small group circle of friends. Uh, I know there's some of my other friends, such as Julia is here, and I uh, and I value her so so much, and others as well. But like it's um, yeah, like uh, it's uh, I resonate with you with like the moving so many times. Like mm -hmm. I I lived in Italy, I moved to UK, I had friendships in Italy that then I. I don't know. At one point, I just didn't feel that the connection anymore. It's almost like we were just growing apart and we were very different. Yeah. I just, I just saw myself doing completely different things. And this is why as well, I left university. I was doing university in Italy, but I never really felt it was the right thing to do for me. And I just didn't want to follow always the same path that everybody else yeah. was doing. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna leave university, gonna live by myself. And then when I was trying, I was like, boom, I'll move to UK. And and actually, initially for me, it was um, it was really hard as well to meet new friends because I was working really long hours, and you know, you're in a new country, and and I think for me, it's so important to connect with people. I'm very much of an extrovert. I do love socializing. This is why I'm, to be honest, I'm struggling in lockdown because I. We miss yeah. going to events and just feel the connection with people but um but I've you know I have always it's only now that I've managed to maintain a, a like really good friendships and I think as well it's um it's probably because I have much more awareness as well of of myself of the person who that like for who I am so I now as well, I am drawn to certain people and certain people are drawn to me. And also I have mm. learned as well to just be more selective. Like in the past, for example, even say when I was a little bit younger, or even like even when I moved to UK, I um, perhaps I was saying yes to a lot of things that maybe I wasn't happy with just to try to yeah. kind of engage with some people and uh, having start some friendships um but you know it was hard often to connect well now i know exactly what to look for in in friendships so when i connect with a person mm -hmm. i'll make sure that the connection is always there it's and better. i think well i yeah. like the consistency okay. like it's like when i start getting mixed messages like one person is there sometime another another times is not i go a little bit yeah. like i it, i like yeah and the fluidity of the rhythm of the friendship when you can both support each other yeah like consistency is everything in a friendship i think um definitely that's something that i've consistency and stability i think there's the two kind of you can't like personally i can't be friends with someone i can't trust someone that doesn't have consistency and stability because you can't trust someone that doesn't have that, you know, like if, if they're all over the place, they're not going to be. And I say is that, Oh, it's hard for me to understand because my group of friends are all from primary and secondary school, but I feel like it's an amazing trait to be open to meeting new friends periodically. Well, you see, like, I mean, I don't know anyone from primary or secondary Same. school. <laughs> I'm a single person. Like yeah. that to me is like, it's like an alien concept. Like, I kind of wish, I kind of wish I did, but at the same time, like, I'm kind of happy that I don't because I, I mean, I, I see some of them like online and I, I, I guess like I follow maybe a handful of people on Instagram and they're, I mean, most of them look pretty happy and like they, they look fine, but I'm like, I would have nothing in common with any of them apart exactly. from the past. And that, yeah, that's a big thing for me is like having something in common. Um, it's like, I don't know, when, when conversation runs out, if you don't have something in common and that this goes for relationships or friendships, when the conversation runs out and you don't have something in common apart from the past, all you're doing is basically rehashing the past and going over situations that might not actually be that helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, you kind of. Yeah, you're always looking back at the past and, and don't get me wrong sometimes like they're all happy memories and it's yeah back. sometimes that's great if, it, if it's happy memories then happy days but personally they're not be good for me because um it's uh as long as you you know i guess i i've always wished to have you know such a a, a 
group of friends, perhaps from, you know, that they know me so well since childhood. Yeah. But also, Same. looking back, to be honest, I have changed so much that, like, unless, you know, it's, it's beautiful to see groups that they grow together and evolve together. So if it's in that way, which I'm assuming, obviously, this is what's happening to Ila in this case, is like when everybody evolves together, then I think it's just beautiful. That's Everyone, amazing. you know, yeah. you know each other so well. It's just like a big family, a big family supporting each other. You know, that yeah. they always have your back. And you've had experiences when you were like 15 with them. And now they're in your 30s. You still live all like, That's growing. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. But I also think it's very is... rare nowadays. I don't think it's yeah. something that happens Definitely. on a daily basis. Um, I think it's a lot more common for people nowadays to just move to different countries so obviously it's a lot more challenging as well to connect, create stable friendships. Um, and yeah, like, you know, I, I personally experienced it myself. And I think as well, because I have changed so much over the years where at one point as well, yeah. I got to a point where some friendships weren't bringing me any values and they were becoming toxic because they didn't know anymore. Yeah. And I didn't know them either. And it wasn't really a question of communicating, but it was simply we were living in two completely different realities and worlds. And, yep. um, and also, I guess, if... And this happens in relationship too, because, again, I always go back to how much inner work you do. Because if you just don't have your self-awareness and the other person doesn't, even in friendships, if you're constantly projecting your fears and insecurities or your jealousy and bitterness onto each other, you know, you're, you're constantly going to push people away. Um, so eventually you, you keep growing and evolving and perhaps you want to do certain things. You're seeking for different experiences and connection. And that's also part of being human. That's part of this human experience. Some people will stay in your life. Some people will just have to go. And that's also okay. I think... Yeah, definitely. I, I don't want to dismiss the fact that friendship breakups are very, very painful. Uh, can, oh, yeah, can, definitely. They can be definitely. even more painful, the actual relationship breakups. Um, because, you know, with friendships, it's one of like when, when, you know, when you really want to spend time with your friend or even when you have like a problem and, you know, the first person you go to is your friend and when things happen and then... Yeah you actually realize as much painful as it is that you have to let that person go because that person is just not bringing value into your life anymore. And they're not supporting yeah. you. They're not supporting your evolution and your growth. Then, yeah. yeah, it's, you know, at the end of the day, you need to take your time to grieve for that. Yeah, and, and I think it's really important to remember that friendships and relationships are a two-way street. And you have to, you know, I'm not saying that, you're in a relationship or a friendship to receive but I think you have to be happy to do both give and receive both people have to be happy to do both because if they're not if there's like like I don't know an imbalance mm -hmm. there then there's it's just going to end up with someone being upset and someone feeling like they're not getting what they wanted out of it and someone feeling like they could do better or like whatever you would say but like I think that is the probably I would say the most common reason for a breakup is that there's an imbalance there and it's like it's super simple if you think about it like oh like oh no they cheated or they did this it was dishonest yeah but why why did they do that why did yeah. they cheat because they felt like they weren't getting what they wanted in the relationship and that was the imbalance so it all comes back to imbalance and as well it comes back so, as well to communication and how you can express yeah both how can you express your differences and your needs in a safe way because if we go back say yeah. for example to love languages and the attachment styles right so say for example you have an anxious attachment an anxious attached person in relationship who obviously tends to attract the opposite so perhaps he has uh this person attracts a more avoidant person the avoidant mm. person definitely needs a lot more space in relationship while the other person craves intimacy and connection this doesn't mean also i guess when you look at attachment styles most of the time you might resonate a lot more with one style but this doesn't mean that you know 
you have to identify yourself just with that one because it always depends well on yeah. who you are with and it depends on the situation as well. But yeah. this is why it's so important to communicate because obviously it's it, it's for both to reassure the both of them because say for example you know the avoidant person just wants space because perhaps it might feel a little bit overwhelmed it's like okay well this person my partner always wants the the connection and the intimacy and I feel mm. like sometimes I really want to reconnect with myself and I can't be present all the time and how can I do that you know how can I say that to her in a way that you know perhaps she you know that a person needs to tell me as well that needs uh, a lot of assurance mm. but also it's the, the avoidant needs to tell okay well I need space because of this and that because I need to reconnect with myself for example because, well, whatever, because it's yeah. important for me and I hope you all can understand it but it's it's nothing to do with you and um, I wanted to let you know that it's so important as well um, I, I really do value our connection together so then in that mm. way as well and you you kind of reassure the more the person, anxious, the person. person. Yeah. and and vice versa because the other person as well could say um i do understand that sometimes um you know i might be a little bit triggered or um sometimes i might be a little bit too much and i want the connection but i definitely understand that you need space and i respect that so it's yeah. really it takes a lot of work mm. um and it's uh, it's yeah. also like and it takes guts to even just have those conversations as well like they're such difficult conversations to have they're like even just having the conversation like no no matter the outcome it's still like it takes so much to even have the conversation in the first place yeah you know it's like that's a and that like that those conversations are what makes relationships because like you know you you learn so much more about someone when you go through an adversity like that like hey i want space or hey i need like love or whatever like well okay how are we gonna make these two things connect then let's have a compromise oh hey here's our relationship exactly. you know <laughs> like why, that's, that's what relationships yeah. are compromise and consistency let's find a common ground at the end of the day let's find something where we can both meet halfway and we both feel safe yeah without feeling you know a bit wobbly or a bit insecure or you know where we feel triggered or then it might you know might result in a in a massive conflict for something that perhaps we could have just mm. been resolved just by simple communication and really understanding yeah. both of 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 the couple's needs um and yeah so it's it again and i think as well it's the same as well with understanding the love languages because love languages can be really different uh, from yeah each individual you know um for some people crave a lot more the the verbal reassurance and the words of affirmation and perhaps also the physical touch because they might have not that yeah. much of the hugging um and the connection and the safety from their parents or from their caregivers so for them that is intimacy like for them that's how they mm. can feel safe and protected in the relationship but other people perhaps is like the acts of service and and give gifts yeah. and it's 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 really understanding uh and i think that's also the beauty of it because sometimes some people might think you know that there's the um some people might blame each other almost like because you you tend to want your partner or also your friend to be exactly like you sometimes well you need to remind yourself that it's so uh, it's actually so beautiful to see the difference and to appreciate it yeah. so then you can bring it into yeah. the relationship yeah no definitely and and uh, also going on what you're saying about the kind of the services so to speak um <laughs> without sounding too dodgy um so uh something i was reading uh at you uh, for my uni work was like you know some people aren't really like romantic with their love they're, they're more like companionate but actually you know sometimes it's as much as bringing someone a cup of tea every day and they have their cup of tea bringing your partner their cup of tea in bed every yeah. morning and it's like you don't really think that much about it it's just something that happens it's like oh that's really sweet when it first happens and then it's just something that happens every time every day so you don't think about it but then if it stopped you'd notice straight away like what the hell's going on like 
what happened? Yeah. Did, did I do something wrong? You know, like what's, what's going yeah. on? So it's, it's kind of like that, that kind of thing of the consistency and the consistency and the consistency and the consistency. And then suddenly, bam, just mm -hmm. like, oh my God, what, like, what happened? What happened? Something happened? Like, so, did I do something wrong? Like, you know, it's, it kind of like a massive wake up call, even though it's probably nothing. Like maybe, I don't know what the reason could be, but like, it, it could be nothing. Um, but it could be a lot. That could mean a lot, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess it's... But yeah, I guess it's, yeah, like doing things for someone, just random little bits and bobs, I think is, is something, it, it, even even in a friendship or relationship, it's just a way to say that you care. Yeah. Like, it's so simple and it's so, like, there, there's literally nothing to it. But, you know, I don't know. Going to the going to the petrol station and bringing them back a chocolate yeah. bar, it's like it's probably going to cost you like fifty p, and it's the, the literally the cheapest thing. Like, but it's like oh, they were thinking of me when they were in the petrol station. That is so cute. Oh my god, I'm so lucky. You know, just kind of like it's so stupid. It's so kind of nothingy, but actually, it's everything. Really, that well, kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's 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 as simple as again like a chocolate bar or even like i don't know like just a simple word you know what i mean or like yeah 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 definitely or even like oh i went for a walk and i picked this flower for you like it you don't need a bunch of flowers like a bunch of flowers means probably less than a flower they picked on a walk even though the bunch of flowers are going to last way longer probably mm -hmm. but like they they went on a walk and they thought of you and they picked your flower like oh that's just yeah, you know yeah obviously never never happened to me but i'm just gonna dream about it like, um, if it if it's not flowers it's something else and that's fine. i'm just <laughs> dropping in for any like future future partners if they like want to watch back i'm just gonna like you know just be like yeah so if you can go and buy yeah. like get me a flower <laughs> from the woods i'd really appreciate that thanks <laughs> that life that past when i talked about the flowers. Yeah, yeah yeah just 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 watch that bit of the live and yeah i mean i could that yeah uh, well i told you the other day about my about my hinge chats um talking to all these guys that are like like all these guys it's been like three so yeah i don't know i can't really say all these guys there's been like three but i've been asking them my awkward questions and just seeing how they react and it's freaking hilarious to be honest yeah, so, like, share a little bit of their reaction? yeah sure like it doesn't yeah it doesn't bother me um but but okay so i obviously tell them what I'm asking them or ask permission to ask, I guess. So I'm, I'm like, Oh, I'm studying relationships at uni. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about relationships? Like obviously give them some context. Cause otherwise they'll just think I'm a weirdo, which they probably think anyway, but I mean, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm like, if I, if, if I wasn't weird, you'd be so <laughs> bored. Um, <laughs> but this one guy that I was talking to last week, I asked him, how does love make you feel? And he said he doesn't use the L word. And I thought, bye. <laughs> that's literally like a project, like, here, yeah. in security is like, oh, I'm so dismissive because, you know, I'm so avoidant on this. I don't even talk about the word love. That, yeah. that, that, that makes yeah. me cringe. And who knows what, you know, they probably have so many yeah. issues that they haven't sorted out yet. Or they must have. You can't, you can't say that sentence i don't say the l word you can't say that sentence without having issues about it like wow i don't know like he definitely i don't want to like i literally spoke to this guy once so i don't want to make too many judgments on him but he definitely seemed like a sort of person that acted like he had it all figured out but maybe did not yeah yeah so i mean i really don't think anyone has it all figured out so i think that's an assumption i could probably stand by i mean I Say um, it, it's again, again as we said before it's a very subjective feeling it's very hard to to figure this out and i don't think we will, will ever will <laughs> not not at least in this life in this but, um, but we can only you know experience it according to to what we feel to where we connect yeah but like i guess even if the answer like so my answer was how of how does love make you feel is terrified yeah. And and I'm I'm happy to like admit that. Um, but even if that's your answer, at least you're considering. Yeah. You know, and 
like, okay, I don't have like a really good relationship with love, let's say. Um, and yeah, I'm, I mean, I have, I've had too many failed relationships to really love love, even though I still love love and I still, I'm like Ross from Friends, like three divorces and still wants to get married. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I haven't obviously been divorced, but like, I've, I'm, I'm like, I've had so many bad relationships, but I still want a good one. I'm still holding out for it. And it's like, I still believe it can happen. You know, like I, you, so, you know, it's of course, past relationships, especially when you've been hurt, um, mm. can really leave you feeling, you know, they, they leave you some bad marks, you know, some wounds that take time to heal and recover but it doesn't mean that you're broken it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you either and also i guess if you see in a way that that person somehow even if you know you remember as a bad experience was still a learning like that person came in yeah yeah definitely hope you learn definitely. something about yourself and uh you know you are also where you are right now because because of the experiences. Hey, Luana, it's nice to see you. Um, because of the experiences that you had in your previous relationships as well. Um, so I guess it's how it, it's working on leaving that energy uh, of that previous relationship and that person in that relationship and trying not to bring it into the new relationship, which is tremendously hard because yeah i guess it gets harder and harder the more like the more you get messed around or the more relationships you have that end badly yeah. the harder it is to kind of go to the next one and go hey maybe everything will be okay this time because yeah. it probably won't <laughs> i think it makes you more aware as well of more selective as well of what you're looking for very much like it helps you to you know when it's time to draw the line and you know that the person you know you're you're way more able to identify red flags sooner yeah and definitely, that means definitely. You value yourself more and you know that you can deserve what you deserve and because at the end of the day you're, mm. you're valuing yourself you're valuing your own self-love so you're like well if this person if i see the red flags in this person i i and i can see her in the early stages i rather you know set the boundary and and stop rather, yeah rather know two weeks in than two months yeah. in than two years in <laughs> dragging something for the sake of just yeah. being with someone or dating someone and i think that's also the the idea of consciously dating rather than just dating is is the fact that like y you are much more aware of the kind of person or at least the connection that you would like to create mm. with someone um yeah i don't know like because obviously like at the moment i guess you're on hinge as well so that i don't know whether that helped you that way like you are much more aware and you can create more of those boundaries as well for yourself yeah i mean i guess the whole thing with online dating is it's a very like okay next please culture and it's very kind of you know you you, I don't really like judging people off six photos and three sentences, but at this point, I don't really have another choice because, you know, okay, how do you meet people? You go out and about, you go to places where you might have things in common with people. Well, when everything's shut, you can't do that. So you kind of have to look elsewhere. And I guess, like, even it's not really, like, my number one choice of meeting someone online. I'd rather meet someone like naturally yeah. but like that's not gonna happen right now because that's not an option so i guess and i'm i, I guess like i don't i would never go clubbing i would never go to the pub i don't drink that's not my scene at all i would never meet someone that i got on like i would never meet someone that i would want to be with in that situation because it's not my scene so yeah, I wouldn't have anything in common with someone that was there, you know, like I probably go to the pub once every other year. Like that's yeah. my, like my annual or biannual outing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like so 
to me is like doesn't make any sense to do that um and I you know I'd rather meet someone doing something that I was passionate about so that would be climbing on jiu-jitsu maybe I definitely wouldn't want to date an MMA guy because they're all like crazy um so that would be definite no for me so it's like okay well I don't really want to date someone that I train with a jiu-jitsu because it's like such a kind of close contact sport and you don't want to get a relationship in the middle of that because that's just a terrible idea um so then it's like okay so I have to go and meet someone at a competition or I have to go to another gym and it's like that's not really possible I can't really go to another gym just on the off chance there might be someone there that I get on with like okay come on this is ridiculous right okay let's go to hinge <laughs> you know like you look at all the like possibilities it's like oh no okay no okay no okay fine I go on hinge <laughs> so, why, why would you think it's a terrible but, idea in terms of um like say dating someone who uh you know in MMA in terms of do you mean in terms of the actual you know what we talked about in terms of, like, I mean, the, the, the industry, industry itself and their mentality or so uh the thing is with MMA guys is they tend to th right okay so here's the thing about MMA and I include myself in this, by the way, this is 1000% me as well. If you fight in a cage for money, there's something wrong with you. Like 100%, there is something wrong with you. That's not a normal thing to want to do. Um, and I, as I said, I include myself in that. I don't want to be with someone who also has the same thing wrong with them that I have wrong with me, yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, and I think fighters in general are very kind of, I'd say maybe volatile would be a good word to describe. And personally, I need someone that's more chilled than me because I'm I'm crazy hyper. I'm like all go, go, go all the time or I'm completely exhausted. I'm like too yes. extremes. And I need someone that's going to meet me in the middle of those extremes because I, I can't even cope with myself. Like I don't expect someone that, like me to be able to cope with another version mm -hmm. of me. You know, that would be a recipe for disaster. I mean, it would probably be a great relationship for about three days and that would be it. Like, it just, it would not work. Um, and it's not like I would count, like if someone said, oh, I do MMA or I train MMA, I'd be, I wouldn't just go, okay, I'm not talking to you anymore. I'd listen to them and see like how they were. But there is stereotypes for a reason and I haven't really met that many people that go against my stereotypes. So... I'm guessing I'm just as a as a general rule like there's a reason people fight in a cage and that's because they've got unfinished business in their head and I don't want to be a part of that unfinished business yeah. so that's the reason especially, that jiu-jitsu wise especially huh? I guess after your personal experience and after all of the yeah. healing as well that you have to do yeah. um, exactly. you know walking away from you know MA and yeah. then the whole industry and yeah the, the mentality that they do. yeah yeah exactly like it just it just wouldn't make sense uh jujitsu guys tend to be a lot more chilled they tend to be a lot less crazy they, they're you know generally a pretty good bunch egos nowhere near as crazy as well which is another big thing uh the only thing is is the most the most of the jujitsu people you meet are in the gym you train at and you don't want to date someone that you train with because it just, I've done it. It was not a good idea. Um, and it just gets way too much drama. Plus, if you break up, then one of you has to pretty much leave for a while, at least while you get over the relationship. Or if neither of you leave because you're both too stubborn, then you have to see your ex every single day at training. Like, that's not okay, you know? So it's just, like, it's just drama. It's just unnecessary drama. So I would date a jiu-jitsu guy, but not a jiu-jitsu guy I trained with. Only a guy that was in another gym. That yeah, would be and fine. I guess as well, it's it goes back as well to the fact that I think, at least for me, in a relationship, it's important to have common interest, but also, yeah, uh, like it's good to have something separate. Like there are there are interests that you can and activities that you can definitely do with your partner because it's a way as well to connect even more and to bond. Yeah. Um, but also, and also there are interests that perhaps, you, you know, one, one person has and the other person has as well that you can share and talk about. 
Yeah. But also it's not something that you actively do together. And then I guess there are other types of mm. interest as well that like perhaps like one person does it and you don't even know that he does. Like you it's it, it's okay. Like I think sometimes as well, like people get this misconception that if you're in a relationship then you have to do everything together. And I think I'm yeah. toxic as well because it's important as well to just you know, at the end of the day it's two individuals living a different life at the end of the day and mm. even when especially you start living together it's it's very important as well to set your own boundaries in a way and knowing that it's okay to yeah. have your interests your own life your own people to see with and then of course coming back to your partner and the life day yeah. as well that you have with your partner as well definitely um, definitely i think that's so important to have well i think like to me it's like my my two interests is climbing and jiu-jitsu they're like my two hobbies yeah. let's say and i would want to date someone that is one of them so either climbing or jiu-jitsu not mm -hmm. both so then it's like i have one hobby that i do with them and i have one hobby that i do alone but would you say, then that's would you say though that would you appreciate at least if say your partner would be would, would show interest in your hobbies like not in the fact that like, hey, I'll come with you and try it and perhaps you will feel like, I don't know. No, that's like, you, do you feel like if, if your partner says, oh, okay, I'll come and try this with you, would you feel like that they're invading your space if you feel like that that's your own yeah. interest? Yeah. If, if they didn't already do it, I wouldn't want them to start doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Like, if they, if they're Unless like, they're say for example. Like, it, Unless huh? they're genuinely interested and I guess... <laughs> you can recommend. Yeah. I would. I would just tell them to go and start on their own, and start without me. Like you know, like it's like, okay. For example, I was seeing. I like was seeing like talking to a guy, not seeing like literally like talking with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, what? Uh, and he was like, "Oh, I've never. Uh, I've like I've never climbed before." And I was like, "All right, okay, well." And he was like, oh, can I come climbing with you? And I was like, no, because like you need to start. Because the thing is like the way I see it, if you're just like, I hadn't even met this guy yet. It was like talk, still messaging at this point. And um, I was like, okay, if you start climbing with me, you will always associate climbing with me. And if we go on one date and don't gel, you're still gonna associate climbing with me. And you might not climb then because you associate it with me not because you don't want to do it. So if you want to do it, that's fine. But you have to go and start on your own. And then when you've been for a few lessons, you decide you like it, then we can go mm -hmm. together. But I don't want you to go and then just associate that with me and then not do it because of me. Yeah. I, I, like that yeah, wouldn't be fair. Makes sense. I think that stuff would still be their responsibility though in the sense of like if they don't want to do it. Like, Yeah, I know what you mean. But I just like, I, I just, I guess like it's, thinking about all available excuses I'm, I'm like i think as a personal trainer i just like i look to avoid excuses at all times it's like okay they're gonna like whatever client okay they're gonna give me this excuse they're gonna give me this excuse they're gonna give me this excuse and it's like i just have to like pre-plan all my answers to their excuses so I, I kind of end up doing it in relationships as well it's like okay they're gonna have this excuse so i'm gonna make sure that there's an answer for that or you know like Oh, why didn't you carry on climbing? Oh, because I only wanted to do it with you. It was like, well, you didn't want to do it on your own then, did you? So don't do yeah. it. Like, don't do it just to impress me. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's yeah. on you. <laughs> like, if you want to do it, you should do it. But if you if you you just want to do it to impress me, that's not going to yeah. impress oh, me. Oh, yeah, definitely. In that like, way, you know. You know what I mean? It's like, sense, absolutely. Because yeah. I guess in the way, it's, it's also like, you better be honest and authentic from the start in the sense that like, you're yeah. generally interested and it's perhaps something that maybe you were even thinking about before even uh, dating for example yeah. then that's fine but if it's something that like you're doing it just to try and please the other person then yeah like no as well that's... Just, just do what you would like to do at the end of the day. yeah like i'm like that doesn't do anything for me you know um and and actually another guy um separate guy i was talking to on hinge <laughs> literally my life right now um hinge and uni that's it um but like he was like oh um i really want to try climbing or jiu-jitsu like obviously on my profile it says like that i do climb that i climb in jiu-jitsu 
he's like, oh, I really want to try climbing in jiu-jitsu. And I was like, why haven't you already? Because I always want to know, like, if somebody wants to do something, why haven't they done it yet? You know, because usually there's like a list of excuses that why they haven't done it already, which are, in my opinion, not very valid. Um, so I was like, well, why haven't you just, why haven't you done it already? And he was like, oh, well, you know, there's like nowhere really like near me. And I'm like, look at his profile. He lives in London. I'm like there's literally like jujitsu on every corner, like climbing walls and like everywhere, like literally the two probably easiest sports to get into in London. And, oh, I haven't been because there's nowhere close to me. I'm like, how close do you want it? Like, are you not prepared to travel, like, 10 minutes? Is that is that too far? Like, it, you know. And, and so to me, it's like, I'm like, that's not a valid excuse. Like, and if you're, you, you, you know, or, or uh, I want to do it because I want to impress someone. No, that's the wrong reason. Do it because you want to do it for you. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, it's... but yeah, like, so I like, I always like ask people what their excuse is. Obviously, I don't ask them like that, that blunt. Sometimes I do. Um, but I always ask them why they haven't already done something. If they say they want to do it, I'm always like, why haven't you already done it? Because, and that goes for clients as well, by the way, and friends and guys on Hinge and literally anyone. Yeah. Like, why haven't you already done it? And there's always a reason. There's always a block. There's always an excuse. There's always something. And it's like, is it mental or physical? Yeah, okay. You know? Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I, in that way as well. I think as well, even when it comes to dating, the more, not that you have to, you know, be obsessive with asking questions, but like you notice as well, the answers, like if you, you, if you ask specific, specific questions to them, depending on how they answer, that will help you understand even more the red flags yeah. or kind of, yeah, whether they're truly honest with their answers or not. Uh, and yeah. yeah, that will kind of help you identify whether you want to continue with this person or pursue the data. Yeah, definitely. Person. And I feel like another thing, like just going with connection as well, is to always offer up something. So always offer up a piece of information. And that's like, generally speaking, how I connect people on a level that I want to be connected to them is I offer up some information of my own because I don't, otherwise it's just like you're interviewing people, yeah. you know, like I don't want to interview, I don't want to interview someone. I want to get to know yeah. them. So if I give them some information about me, then they're more likely to share the information about them. So I think that's like, just like, relationships dating friends colleagues whoever it is you're trying to connect to I don't think it matters yeah. really I think that's quite universal okay. um but yeah I definitely think that that, that works um just as a connection yeah thing. and generally you um, tend to feel it even more I mean um like I'm quite kind of connected as well to my intuition so I generally tend yeah. to know whether this feels okay mm. and because I feel it as well in my body. Like, I feel like I feel safe, yeah. I feel quite relaxed, I feel quite calm. I don't feel, otherwise I will feel quite alert. I will feel like something is yeah. quite uncomfortable. Like, on guard. Uh, yeah, I absolutely. Know. I will feel my gut, yeah. I will feel in my belly or my heart. And everything just feels a yeah. little bit more uncomfortable. But um, I guess the problem rises when the when you really start to get to know someone as well and perhaps the difference is show in a way that um because that person is perhaps more reserved or a little bit more say avoidant they just without mm -hmm. and most of the time they're not conscious about it like it's just a subconscious thing unless they're just doing a lot they um they tend not to share too much about themselves Mm. And then there's the opposite side, which is the oversharing, because you generally just get so excited and you just want to connect all the time. So, I yep, <laughs> I recognize yeah. that. So I guess that well. it's, it's a being being aware of how much you share. Yeah. Because again, when you get to know someone and you're dating, everything is lovely, but we tend to idealize a bit the person uh, most of the time. Yep. And then when perhaps, I don't know, you know, the, the relationship develops and you both start to feel a 
a little bit more invested, then you just tend to notice more of the differences. And I guess even in the way, perhaps an overshare, an oversharing person could raise the fact, hey, you know, I just wanted to remind you, sorry, that's my wake up alarm reminder. Um, <laughs> wake up <laughs> um, you know that overshine person could say hey you know I just want you to let you know that it's um, you know it's, it's, it's okay and it's safe for you to share more of your experiences if you like, you, like mm -hmm. you kind of because most of the time perhaps that the, the dismissive or the avoidant person tends not to share too much because they might be afraid yeah. or okay. they're just not into it yeah. and yeah. so it's uh it's uh, the safer they are if you just open to that invitation that it's okay to share and you can yeah. trust and be safe in that environment. And I, I think as well when you kind of let them share it's like let them share and be like overly accepting to it then they know that they are in a safe place and that it is okay to share um like i have a I said I have my two girlfriends, my two best girlfriends, and one of them is very, very yes. private. And she, she really struggles to open up. And she has now opened up a little bit more, but it's taken her a long yeah. time. Um, whereas me and the other girl are completely just, well, we'll we don't care. We'll just share anything. We're massive, I'm massively overshare. Like, I, <laughs> I fully own it. I don't care. Um, but, yeah, it's just like, I, I guess, like, I kind of saw that she was quite, unwilling to share and I thought like how can I how can I help her to open up because I know how it feels when you're it's like you're you're tight in your chest when you you know just like always all the time and it's like I don't want her to feel like that I want her to feel free and like like comfortable you know um and she she's obviously feeling freer and more comfortable now because she is starting to share but you know it's it's this I mean obviously that's not a relationship but like it's the same friendship or relationship, I think. Yeah, it's um, like it, it goes that safety and security with create. Yeah, like creating your nest. It's like your birds, and you're creating your nest, and then you like sit in your little nest with your eggs, and then you yeah, share yeah. and share your worm, Absolutely. and then everything's yeah. okay. No, exactly. <laughs> or something. Same as well for because I I used to overshare quite a lot you know just definitely oversharing in general um they have been as well in with with dating and especially when I used to get a little bit more invested but you know it's it's not that I don't do it now because generally I'm quite in, you know social I, I just do like to socialize I'm quite an open person you know I'm you know you can talk to me and I'm, I, I generally listen I, you know I like to have genuine conversations and I, I have no problems talking about my experiences and especially if, if it helps anybody else. Um, yeah, same. But I guess um, I'm a lot more conscious depending on who I am with because, you know. Yeah. Um, well, like how they will interpret it as yes, well. Yeah, so. exactly. Especially if I'm That's still different. getting to know someone because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I actually don't know this person that well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that oversharing can also be a bit uh, for myself as well an overstepping of my own boundaries and just my yeah. personal experience as well so um and that person could not understand it or could also take advantage of that um so i i guess as well it's it's uh it's just yeah being aware of and 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 knowing that you can be safe at one point with someone to yeah. to share absolutely and i think it's yeah. exactly the same when expressing your needs um yeah definitely definitely yeah. i think that it's like hey it's okay to tell me like i I need to know this if we're going to make this relationship work or friendship work i need to know what you need yeah, yeah. you know that that's as simple as that i need to know what you need so and you need to know what i need yeah. because you're not just, you're not a mind reader. Nobody here is a mind reader, you know? People might claim that they are, but they're not. They're lying. Um, and contrary to popular belief, men need more than sex, sleep, and food. I, I don't know if I agree, but apparently that's well, true. Yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, like, they... Maybe they need walking. Do they need walking? Is that where I've been going I wrong? they definitely need... I, you know, I personally think that 
they definitely need to feel safe as well like it's yeah no i think about, they do. like you know the toxic masculinity etc and like men's mental health I think that's definitely another topic that we'll love to talk about and yeah that's, <laughs> it's a topic for another day you know, <laughs> sometimes we have the tendency for some women or you know i'm not generalizing here but there's still the misconception of blaming men for yeah they oh didn't yeah done yeah without taking in consideration perhaps their past or their insecurities or their fears or what they're really feeling and the fact that perhaps yeah. they're not uh, they might not be they might not know how to communicate uh, yeah so i think it's also up to us to create that safety mm -hmm. for them so so yeah. then they feel okay to share and also think about like yeah it's always it's not putting pressure because say for example if i tend to overshare and i don't know you know my partner tends not to overshare it that much i don't know like just say it like then i guess it's for the oversharing person you can say hey perhaps you know i i know that you know you i don't know you don't know you, you might not know exactly all of your needs right now but i can you know and that's okay too i understand like not putting yeah, yeah, pressure yeah, yeah. in the way like <laughs> hey, like, if you don't know your, all of your needs yeah. right now, like, I've got... Well, yeah, it's like, an, it's like an evolving thing. It's like, you're not going to wake up in the morning and be like, I need this, 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 and this. It's like, I'm, you're going to wake up in the morning and just be like, oh, you know what I really need today is ice cream. You know what I really need today is yeah. a hug. You know what I really need today is just someone to tell me that I'm okay. <laughs> you know, okay. and it's like... It's not going to be the same every day. I mean, I'm I'm not going to say that you don't need ice cream every day, because you probably do. Like everyone needs ice cream every day, but it might not be the one thing that's on your mind every day. Yeah, yeah. You know? And also, I guess it's, it your needs might change as well depending on who you. are yeah. As well, like what situation yeah. you find yourself in, but and like what they already kind of so to speak provide naturally. So like some guys are really good at talking and like words of affirmation and some guys are really good at like physical touch so like they'll always like put that arm on your shoulder or like you know put your arm around you but they won't really say that yes. much yeah but like some guys but you might need more of one or the other and you don't know until you already have it like oh you know what i'd really like this yeah, yeah. it's an like, exploration at the end of the day as well Liv, but it's for both yeah. people to to be best willing yeah. to explore it and yeah, about definitely. it and and about to kind yeah. of understand like when when you bring uh, awareness into the relationship like hey you know I've realized that perhaps I need a little bit more verbal reassurance because of this and you know do you think you can do you know can we work can you help me with it you know it's, yeah. it's how you yeah ask exactly. things as well rather than hey you did this so like pointing to her, yeah I, it's like, hey, I'm I'm stuck. I'm I I feel broken. Can you yeah. help me? Yeah. Like I feel like I'm out of my depth. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like that like I need your help or can you help me? Or is there anything you can do or whatever? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um but sorry, I'm just oh, it's nine o'clock. Oh, it's weird. Oh, it's gonna the ten seconds. Oh really? That's weird. Maybe Oh, maybe you can do more than an hour now. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe we'll do it in like one minute. I don't know. Usually she, it gives me a countdown, but I'm not quite... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a 30-second countdown, right? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. Oh, imagine. Yeah. Maybe you're allowed more now. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe you'll just randomly cut out and be really exactly. annoying. Exactly. That's what I'm worried um, about because I'm like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I am as well. Lives are an hour unless something has changed uh yeah i don't know yeah i don't know either but, um i don't know is there well if, is there anything else that you would like to add on to the live it's extended for hours i mean oh. there's like a thousand things but for now let's just stop at an hour i think is sensible because we could talk about like probably we could probably do like a 24-hour marathon we could. live if they let us okay. Easily. But apparently, it's extended to four hours, but I don't know if everyone. Oh, four hours is long. Okay, okay. well, let's it's not long. do four hours then. Next time we'll do four hours. You're very good to know. I did not know this. 
uh, yeah, okay. Well, amazing. Oh, cool. Good to know what Instagram's doing to help us. I like it. That's good because in that way, it means that you can also like every now and then like, you can invite other people as well into the live and make it into like big kind of interviews every hour or something. You can do it. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah that would be cool. Oh, project for another day. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, that was a great conversation. I it really was. enjoyed it. Thanks for inviting and me. Listen, obviously, I, I know that we mainly talked about friendship and relationships, etc., because it also was the topic of tonight and uh, and obviously what you're studying. But uh, because you're also a self defense coach and you're you know you're you're a personal trainer with years of experience, um, what are you offering at the moment, and how can people reach out to you? Great question. Uh, so hhhselfdefense.com or at for Instagram. Uh, pretty much that's the way to contact me. Um, or at gmail.com if you want to email me. Um, <laughs> it all goes. Are you offering just online at the moment or are you working? Yeah. So at the moment it's just online. Um, so you get five sessions a week. One is Zoom face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. And then the other four are, I email you or text you, whichever you prefer, and you can do it. So at the moment, I really have um, mainly families. So it's either families like doing it together or like I have a, two sisters that are doing it together. So it's nice that they can kind of practice on each other. Um, and it's like a really good bonding situation as well. So like all the families that I have at the moment, they all train together every yeah. day. It's like five days a week. Um, so it's really nice just to see them bonding. Um, and it's been, I guess like lockdown has been a struggle and people are kind of feeling a bit fraught. So it's, you know, see people being able to bond. That was my phone saying low batteries. <laughs> so again, oh. in that way, something happened anyway, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just charging my phone right now before it's we all good. die. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so mainly that, so I will put your website in the description Thanks. and we'll make sure to save this live as well. And, yeah. uh, yeah. Anything else that you would like to share or any other things at the moment you are offering in terms of your own coaching? No, but I will say that next time you see someone that looks sad, smile at them and maybe throw them a compliment. Yes. Throw them a compliment and just, just let them know they, you know, hold you're there through whole space for them, really. And yeah, yeah. I mean, like we could probably do another whole. I'm gonna be talking about compliments next week on my on my Instagram anyway. So if anyone wants to hear what I've got to say, then follow me. Yeah, Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's gonna be yeah next week. Next week's gonna be compliment week. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Well, thank you so much for awesome. tonight's chat. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Right, see you next time. Bye. Bye.